Alicia. Welcome to my channel. Uh, so, di so today we're going to learn about the PES statement. Now what the PES statement is for is for nutrition professionals, um, you know, when they're working in the hospital. Uh, so what the PES statement is, is a nutrition diagnosis. Now, this is not a medical diagnosis, okay? So whenever you follow your ADON, that's your assessment, your diagnosis, which would be your PES, uh, your intervention, and then your monitoring, and then your evaluation. But today we're just going to focus on the nutrition diagnosis. So, as I said, the PES statement, so this stands for Problem Etology uh, sign and systems. So what the P stands for is the nutrition diagnosis. Now the terminology is described in the nutrition care process. So this is not, um, you know, in your own words. This is very specific uh, language and terminology that you have to use. Um, a lot of these examples are um, are online through the academy, um, but your teacher will definitely um, give you examples in well and um, have you download the ENCPT uh, for your senior year. So the P stands for, you know, your problem, your nutrition diagnosis. Uh, as I said before, this is not a medical diagnosis, for instance, um, if your patient has lactose intolerance, you can't say that that's a problem. Um, but I'll get more into that in a second. And then we have your E, the cause of the problem, or what are the patient's actions that are causing the problem? Okay? And then you have S, which are your sign and symptoms. Um, that's just going to focus on uh, like lab values and a really quantitative values as well. well. We'll get more into specifics later. Um, so I just wanted to mention something um, on the NCP on the Academy, the difference between a medical diagnosis and a nutrition diagnosis. A nutrition diagnosis identifies nutrition diagnosis, okay? Uh, so inadequate oral intake, um, excessive energy intake, things like that. Um, and then we have your medical diagnosis, which is disease and diseases and pathologies like stroke, uh, diabetes, lactose intolerance, things like that. So we won't ever say the problem is that the patient is diabetic or lactose intolerance. We'll say like as far as reference to cardiovascular disease, you'll say excessive fat intake, okay? So as we know, um, excessive fat intake increases to obesity, which increases your risk of cardiovascular disease. Um, but with the patient, um, you know, there's obviously going to be a lot more factors when it relates to cardiovascular disease. Um, but let's focus on the diagnosis. So I have one example up here. So I underlined it in red because that is the specific terminology you want to use in the NCP terminology. Okay. So this is the problem, inadequate energy intake, verbatim. And then you want to write related to. So what um, what is the problem related to? Swallowing difficulties. Obviously, if you have swallowing difficulties, um, you're definitely going to have inadequate energy intake, as evidenced by. So, this is kind of like the quantitative values right here. So, you'll have the confirmed swallow test um, that identifies the swallowing difficulties. And then you have the energy intake of 500 kcals per day. Well, that's definitely telling you that the patient is consuming way less than what they need. Um, your weight, 80 pounds. So obviously the person, person is underweight. And 
the ideal body weight is 70 percent so it's under 100 so that just lets you know that this person is you know malnourished underweight and consuming less energy so this is all the evidence of the inadequate energy intake so here's another example uh, so as you can see the problem for this patient is inadequate mineral intake of calcium uh, related to patient not taking supplements and doesn't drink milk due to GI issues. Um, as you can see, there's definitely a lot more wording here compared to the other example, and that's okay. Um, really, you just base all this, this information right here on what the patient is, patient's actions. What are they doing? The patient is not taking supplements and doesn't drink milk due to GI issues. So this is what the patient is telling you or the cause of the problem as evidenced by. Now, as I've told you, quantitative values. Uh, so the quantitative values that were assessed were the DEXTA, which is a bone uh, mineral scan. And she was diagnosed with osteopenia in her spine and osteoporosis in her hip. An example of a patient. So this is patient number one. A uh, 67-year-old woman, height 5'6", weight 135 pounds, uh, but she was 155 pounds six weeks ago. Her signs and symptoms were shortness of breath or dyspnea, uh, and that's kind of what shortness of breath is, uh, inability to consume uh, small meals, and that's related to, uh, you know, shortness of breath, uh, and dyspnea, and you have the diagnosis of heart failure, uh, food, consume processed foods um, in large amounts, and consume soda in large amounts. Um, so first when you, you know, assess your patient, which would be the assessment portion of your NCP, um, you kind of want to look at all this. Even though that there are diagnoses, we can't say in our nutrition diagnosis that heart failure is a problem okay so we have to relate it to you know weight or nutritional uh, implications so first you always want to start with your bmi okay so i went ahead and did all the math here um so your bmi you want to find the weight in kilograms first and i found it to be 61.36 kilograms and then you want to get her height, and that would be the 2.81 meters squared. You divide that, and then you get the BMI of 21.83. Now, the interesting thing, what you'll see is the BMI, they will be healthy. As we know, that's not the really best indicator um, to assess weight. Uh, so we, since the information on here, there was... A weight loss six weeks ago so we want to do ideal body weight percent so the weight loss so currently she's 135 pounds um, but six weeks ago she was 155 pounds so you divide 135 by 155 and you will get a percentage which this is 87 percent ideal body weight um, so if you've seen like this is actually a 10 percent, uh, well it's actually over 10 percent uh, weight loss in six weeks is significant. So we can go ahead and assess that, um, you know, her weight loss is part of the problem, or you can put that as a PES statement. Examples of PES for patient one. So as you can see, there is two, and that's okay. You can have more than one PES. You just want to pick uh, your best nutrition diagnosis statement. So one of them is inadequate energy intake related to inability to, co to consume large meals. Uh, the patient was shortness of breath and dyspnea which she wasn't able to consume large meals as evidenced by 
And this is your quantitative values. Now, the medical diagnosis was heart failure, dyspnea, shortness of breath, and what we found is ideal body weight was 87% and 10% weight loss in six months. Now, this other PDS statement, this would be your knowledge related portion uh, for your nutrition diagnosis. So the food, food and nutrition related knowledge deficit. Obviously this person was consuming high amounts of processed foods which are high in salt, fat, and sugar. Um, so obviously this was related to patient consumes foods not related to not recommended to heart failure um, and you want to itemize processed high fat sodium and sugar and the sign and symptom for DX with heart failure, dyspnea and 10% weight loss. Patient number two. Uh, patient number two is a 25 year old male, height five foot six, weight 210 pounds, BMI 34, uh, signs and symptoms, uh, fasting blood glucose, 180 milligrams per deciliter, cholesterol 245, uh, diagnosed with type two diabetes, um, and what, the, what um, foods this person doesn't like is fruit and vegetables, uh, eats out uh, breakfast and lunch five days a week, likes cheese and soda and no water. So already on this assessment criteria, um, you can already tell what's wrong with this patient. Obviously with the BMI of 34, you can already assess that this patient is obese. Okay. Um, as far as lab values, um, you just kind of have to know those fasting blood glucose over a hundred. Um, so that's not good. Cholesterol is over 200 and indicating on this food right here, it doesn't like fruit and vegetables. So that's going to indicate a low fiber diet, um, eats out breakfast and lunch. That's going to be high fat, high sodium, um, and likes cheese and soda. So that's going to be, uh, you know, fat and your sugar. Um, so you can already, even the, even the PES statements right here, you can already say inadequate intake of fiber. That's something that you can, uh, make as a nutrition diagnosis. Uh, you can also say, uh, excessive fat intake, um, you know, related to this information right here as evidenced by, uh, your signs and symptoms and your diagnosis. Uh, but I went ahead and put two PES statements right here. One obviously is the obese. So this patient is obese. Uh, that's a problem. And that's related to the patient consumes high fat, sugar, sodium, no fiber, and water. Um, now your signs and symptoms, you can put, you know, their weight, their BMI, the fasting blood glucose, cholesterol, and the diagnosis of the type 2 diabetes. And then I have another PES statement. Um, so under your knowledge portion of the diagnostic terminology um, is a nutrition knowledge related deficit um, related to the patient consumes foods not recommended for type 2 diabetes. Yeah, obviously this person is not eating right uh, for their diagnosis and they probably uh, need some nutrition counseling pronto. And then your signs and symptoms would be the same as previous. So as you can see, there's a lot of nutrition diagnosis um, that you can make. It's important to just uh, make the one that's more, not so much important, but the one that will make the most impact for this patient. Um, so that is the end of the PES statements. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.